Good evening. A warm welcome to all of you for this webinar. Natural is future. We are thankful to all of you for taking your precious time to join this webinar. I am Mithun Raj, Product Manager, Natural Remedies Private Limited. I would be the moderator of this webinar. This webinar is presented to you by Natural Remedies Private Limited. Before going to our main topic, please let me allow to give a small brief about Natural Remedies. Our visionary, Sri R.K. Agarwal, a chairman with his foresightedness created pioneering activity in herbal and animal healthcare domain. Today, under the leadership of our managing director, Mr. Anurag Agarwal, and our chief operating officer, Mr. K. Narendra Reddy, Natural Remedies is number one herbal veterinary healthcare company of India. The backbone for getting the identity of number one for us is our world-class research and development center, which is located at Bangalore. Natural products are very complex in structure with deeper of science and validation. We developed few of our brands as brand leaders in their segment, and we call them best in class natural solutions. Based on the science and deliverables, our products are patronized by a satisfied customers around the world. And as a result, we have strong presence in more than 30 countries. Natural remedies provide solutions in terms of specialty products for all species, namely ruminant, poultry, aqua, and pets. We believe nature is the treasure, science is the strength, and health and happiness are the core of life. And our vision is that we harness nature, apply science for the health and happiness. Natural remedies have a world-class state of the art, research, and development facility where we have more than 40 scientists working with us. We have more than 120 scientific publication in peer-reviewed journals and more than 15 patents. More than 220 phyto compounds isolated for global reference standard and more than 100 monographs contributed for US Pharmacopoeia, British Pharmacopoeia and Indian Pharmacopoeia. We have our in vitro GLP certified lab for safety studies. The quality control process of natural remedies is based on four pillars, genuinity, safety, efficacy, and consistency. We follow a stringent quality control process to provide you safe and effective product batch after batch. You get what you pay for. Being vocal for local, we are an Indian multinational organization <clears throat> and growing globally across 30 countries. Today, some of our brands has turned to global brands, namely Phytosy, Codin Plus, and Stody. Now, proceeding towards our main presentation, to make this webinar interactive, there are options for chat, question, and polls on your screen. If you are using a laptop or desktop, you can see these options on the right side of your screen. If you are using a mobile phone, you can see these options if you scroll down. If you want to introduce yourself or give any suggestions, please use the chat option. If you want to ask questions, please use the question option. You can ask your question anytime during the webinar, and we would be happy to answer all of your questions during this webinar or through your email at a later time. Today, we have Dr. Sudhir Rukadikar, an eminent veterinary pathologist and a renowned poultry health consultant who has 36 plus years of experience in poultry field. Dr. Rukdika graduated with BVC and AH degree from Bombay Veterinary College, Mumbai, in May 1980, and post graduated in veterinary pathology from same institute in January 1983. He worked as assistant professor of pathology at Bombay Veterinary College for about three years. Dr. Rukdika has a wide exposure to disease diagnostic laboratory procedures as well as field operations. He has worked from the grassroots level in the poultry farms and started career in poultry as poultry pathologist in May 1985. Dr. Ruptiger has also served as DGM Venkateshwara Hatcheries and AVP of Globion India Private Limited, among various other positions throughout his widespread career. His clients are spread in India as well as other countries like Bangladesh, Nepal, and Nigeria. He is a technical advisor to a few pharmaceutical and animal biological manufacturing companies. I welcome Dr. Sudhi Rukdikar, sir, 
on stage. Today, he will enlighten us about a very relevant topic for current scenario, respiratory challenges in chickens in humid conditions, an overview and solution. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, let me start sharing my screen. Yes, sir. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Okay. So uh, I welcome all again uh, from my side. And uh, thank you very much, Natural Remedies, for giving me this opportunity to speak on this very relevant topic. And uh, we know that this company is a leader in bringing phytogenics in uh, poultry field also. So I think in humans also, nowadays, people are going more towards herbal preparations. And we in poultry also are trying to avoid antibiotics and go to herbal preparations. Now, as uh, Mithun said, uh, we are going to discuss about respiratory challenges in uh, poultry, especially with reference to high humidity, which is seen in this season. Now, instead of specific disease as such or specific respiratory entity, many times it so happens that it's a combination many times with involvement of viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites, sometimes it is a complicated picture. So nowadays, instead of one specific disease, many times it appears as respiratory disease complex. So we call this RDC. And we are going to see what are these impacts of RDC, especially in the uh, present situation of high humidity in all the areas. Now in this era, uh, poultry operations are extending widely throughout the world, not only in India, not only in Asia, and they are growing fast. But along with that, respiratory diseases are becoming increasingly apparent in chickens. And maybe the intensive rearing methods what we are following, they are responsible for marked increase in avian respiratory problems worldwide. And that's why I said a broader term, RDC is used in case of this complication. Now you look at the economics. Crores of rupees are lost each year in India as a result of poultry diseases caused by viruses, bacteria, and fungi. Despite the abundant use of antibiotics, best available vaccines, the microbial diseases remain a constant problem to the poultry industry. And one of the major reasons for this is high bio burden, heavy bio burden. What is bio burden? The presence of disease causing organisms into the shed, maybe viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites. When these are in high numbers, at unacceptably high levels, then these are carried over from one batch to next. And that's why the cleaning and thorough disinfection of sheds before placement of new flock are very important. I'll touch this point again in my further slides. So this becomes one of the major reasons why despite use of major antibiotics and best available vaccines, you don't get the results. Because the, once the population of these microorganisms increases beyond acceptable limits, it can break through the immunity of vaccinated birds also. And that's why many times the vaccines fail. We blame the vaccine, but there may be other reasons which could be reason for by failure. Now there is also a growing level of public pressure to restrict the use of antibiotics to therapeutic than prophylactic use in food animals. You know, although the last three, four, five years, this topic is being discussed. So many residues of these antibiotics in chicken meat, that discussion is going on. And you know that because of this emergence of newly MDR bacteria, multi-drug resistant bacteria, this has become a major issue. So we don't want to use the antibiotics as far as possible in our poultry, poultry production. We should use only for therapeutic use and not as a prophylactic use. That is for prevention use like antibiotic growth promoters. Now that's why we have to go, we have to pay more attention to increased animal hygiene levels. Animal here we restrict of course to chicken, but if we increase hygiene levels in our rearing practices, we can reduce the challenge on existing vaccines and prolong their useful life. We know nowadays, many times the vaccines fail, newer strains come, they are added to vaccines, these vaccines come to market, newer antibiotics are very few. So naturally, if we increase the level of hygiene in our poultry production systems, this will definitely reduce the challenge on existing vaccines and prolong their useful life. Similarly, it can reduce the erosion of available antibiotic resources. 
because antibiotics, as I said, very few molecules newly come into the market, and it takes many years for a molecule to come in the market and settle as a treatment part. So that erosion will to stop, and that's why if we increase the hygiene level, the erosion will be reduced, and this will be available for use in poultry as well as human use. So what are the predisposing causes of respiratory infection? What is predisposing? Which will pave way or make a way for respiratory problems to occur in the chickens. Most important in this season is dampness, which is high humidity. Then poor air exchange. In many times in this season, they may have to keep the curtains closed because of rains. And then the poor exchange will be there. Ventilation will not at all be there. Overcrowding, which reduces the immunity power of the birds, immunosuppression. Sudden temperature changes, one day 25 degrees, next day 30 degrees, or one day 15 degrees, next day 10 degrees. Sudden temperatures, the birds are not able to adapt with the temperature change. Filthy litter, as the moisture is high, the litter may be filthy, may not dry properly. And the vaccination reactions, this is a very important point. Not only in this season, around the year we are facing this problem, majorly in broiler breeders and broilers rather than layers. But this is also an important point. So one of these, or all of these together, will make a way for these viruses or bacteria or fungi or parasites to cause the respiratory problems in our chickens. Now, what are the common signs of respiratory disease complex in chickens? What is, of course, sneezing. We also, whenever we get cold, we start getting runny nose, we start sneezing. So that will be very first sign. Open mouth breathing, when the birds are not able to comfortably breathe air, they have to open the mouth and take the air inside. So open mouth breathing. Gurgling sounds, breathing sounds when the birds breathe in or breathe out, there is some gurgling sound coming out, which can be very clearly heard in the flocks during night period when the birds are not active. Ruffled feathers, of course, not a specific sign, but in many times you may get this in uh, respiratory distress. Discharge around nostrils and eyes. I will show some photographs also. Generally, you should not expect any discharge from nostrils or eyes, even in humans. We don't have any discharges from the eyes or nostrils unless we have some cough and cold issues. Then eye swelling, I will show you some photographs also that, and head shaking. All these are common signs of respiratory disease complex in chicken. Of course, only from signs we will not be able to diagnose a particular disease. That's why we are referring the term RDC. Now, what are the losses because of respiratory disease complex? One is poorer performance, maybe layers or broilers or breeders the performance will be poor. In case of layers, it will be drop in egg production, deterioration of internal and external quality of eggs. That is, external quality means the shell structure, shell uh, shape of the eggs, calcification. Internally, the thin albumin and thick albumin and yolk, all those things will be damaged if there is RDC. Higher mortality may be in layers, may be in broilers, may be in breeders. Mortality will be high because the respiratory system is damaged. Why it is more sensitive, we'll discuss in the further topic. Condemnation at processing plant. When the broilers are going to processing plant, if the birds are having uh, RDC, they are not dead, they will be sacrificed at the uh, processing plant. But when the carcasses are open for processing, they will see inside the changes and the carcasses will be condemned. They will not be accepted for further processing. And then more likely, they will be affected by immunosuppressive diseases. And that will be having more severe and prolonged course of disease. We don't want any disease to occur in poultry farms that is in the first phase. If at all it comes, we want it to disappear quickly by our management methods and treatment part. But if the immunosuppression is there, the birds will suffer more severely and more longer period with the disease. Now, why chicken respiratory system is so important uh, in our poultry? One thing, it is very different from mammals. We people are mammals. We have got two different sections in our body, thorax and abdomen. And our respiratory system ends at thorax. There is a dividing curtain or diaphragm. And down below, there is no respiratory system. But that is not the case in case of chicken. Chicken respiratory system is spread throughout the body, right from nostrils till the end of the part, body part, the respiratory system is spread. And that's why maintaining integrity of respiratory system, maintaining immunity of respiratory system is very important because if you insert the respiratory system, it will have overall impact on the general performance of the birds, broiler, layer, and breeder. As we know, there is upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract. 
Upper respiratory tract is nostrils, trachea, and bronchi. The windpipe, which divides into two bronchi, and the nostrils and sinuses. That is all upper respiratory tract, which is important first line of defense. Whenever any pathogen tries to enter the respiratory system, these are the first line of it will be tried by bird not to allow entry of these in the nostrils, in sinuses, in trachea, in bronchi. There is certain mechanism I'll show you in the next slide, which not does not allow these pathogens to enter into the deeper respiratory tract. And then lower respiratory tract, that is lungs and air sacs. Air sacs is the very distinctive feature of the avian respiratory system. We don't have air sacs, we have lungs, which are having a different structure than chicken lungs. So air sacs is a special structure only in case of birds. Thin walled extensions of bronchi that look like balloons. There are different, I'll show you the photograph of schematic drawing of this uh, air sacs. But these air sacs is also a major part of respiratory system of chicken. And since it is spread throughout the body, the damage to this will have a very bad impact on the performance. And one special more characteristic of these air sacs is some of them are connected to longer bones like femur and humerus. I will show you the photograph. Femur is the leg bone which we eat as leg piece and humerus is the bone in the wings. Now these bones are also having con con uh, contact from air sacs. Connection is there. So if the air sacs get infected, the bones are also likely to get infected. Now this system is for only for birds because they form light bones, pneumatic bones, which help them to fly. The birds are supposed to fly. So in the flight, this becomes advantageous. But that's why it becomes delicate also because air sacs are connected to humerus as well as in the femur. So we must take care of air sacs, which is respiratory system. This is a schematic drawing of air sacs. You can see here, all these balloon-like structures are all these air sacs. And here on the upper side, upper left side, you can see one humerus that is a bone which is in the wings. And then down below in the last abdominal air sac, you can see which is connected to the femur, which is a leg piece what we eat. So the either side, they are connected to these bones. These bones are called as pneumatic bones. Pneumat is related to air. That's why pneumonia is infection, inflammation of lungs. So these pneumatic bones also may get infected if some infection is there in their sex. So you can see other same thing in the colored picture also. That some are the paired air sex, some are single air sex, but this is the trachea coming inside the lungs and then all these air sex which will help a complete respiratory system of the birds or complete respiration mechanism, inhalation of air and expiration of air, which are very important parts of it. And one more speciality for chicken, system is cleft in the heart palate. Heart palate, if you touch your heart palate by your tongue or wing, uh, finger, you don't see any break. It is a continuous thing. If there is cleft in heart palate, it's an anomaly. It's a normal thing in humans. But in case of chickens, what you see is this is also part of respiratory system. And many times you must have seen that the chickens cannot eat anything or swallow anything with mouth shut. Because if they eat with shut mouth, the feed will enter into the cleft. So they have to let the mouth and then swallow it. So this is also a speciality of chicken system. Now it's a part of also avian immune system. Now immunity is a key word in human uh, world also. Since COVID-19 last year, February, March, everybody is speaking of immunity and immunity. And in immunity also a lot of herbal preparations are being recommended and used by humans. So even system, immune system is also again having different arms and one respiratory system is also an arm of avian immune system. You know there is something called a GALT and BALT, gut associated lymphoid tissue and bronchial associated lymphoid tissue. So this BALT helps in immune system and when we want overall immunity of birth to be good, we must increase the immunity of respiratory system also. General immunity is one part, gut immunity is one part, respiratory immunity is one part. So we should try to immune, make immune the respiratory system. So products are there to increase the immunity of respiratory system, which can be used so that the respiratory tract, which is equipped with defense mechanisms should work properly and defend the entry of disease causing organisms into the body of the birds. <coughs> now what this immune system will do to prevent or limit infection by airborne disease agents. How it does, I'll show you in the next picture. So they will, one thing they will try to prevent 
or if at all they cannot prevent 100 percent they will see that minimum part goes inside and maximum part is thrown out that's why i said it is a first line of defense then to remove the inhaled particles whatever is inhaled by birds they will try to remove it by their movement and then to keep the airways clean keeping the airways clean is very important part be it humans or animals or chicken we must keep the airways clean when our airways are also not clean we don't feel happy we don't feel very fresh because we cannot have good fresh amount of air inside our body now looking at the importance of respiratory system of chickens we know how important it is because any insert to respiratory system is definitely going to damage your performance maybe in broilers you will have higher mortality higher hcr in case of layers you will have poor quality eggs number of eggs will be reduced feed per egg may increase in case of breeders you may have less number of chicks hatchability may reduce so all these factors are indirectly impacted by respiratory system and that's why we we should know what challenges are faced by this system in current humid conditions what are the solutions at our hand to prevent the problems and if at all they affect the system how to minimize the deleterious effects of humid conditions on respiratory system because we know that the system is delicate throughout the body and very important in immune system also now what happens in this season dampness is high that is humidity now generally around 50 to 70 percent relative humidity is supposed to be comfortable and very healthy for our chickens it should not be very dry like 20 percent or should not be high like 100 percent because if you go to coastal areas maybe kolkata maybe uh, east godavari west godavari you will see there is high humidity almost 100 percent so we don't want either very high humidity or very low but in this season it so happens that despite being away from sea there will be humidity higher in most of the shades now as i said many times you have to keep the curtains closed in case of open houses so exchange air exchange will not be normal we always say that there has to be a very good ventilation in case of chickens right from their hatching till they are sold either as culverts or as broilers or breeders they have to have a very good ventilation so that the dangerous gases like ammonia carbon monoxide carbon dioxide they are removed from the shade and fresh air containing a lot of oxygen comes into the shade we know there is about 19 to 20 percent oxygen in our air so we should get that much concentration of oxygen in the shade so that birds get good oxygen but if the air exchange is poor because of closed curtains or other factors which are related to management the exchange will not be good and the birds will not be having good air to inhale filthy litter if the litter is very dry uh, very dirty very wet then that is also reason for our problems and vaccination reactions that i will come to you again at a later point but vaccination reaction as i said in my earlier slide it's not only restricted to humidity or this humid area uh, humid season it's always around the year a problem for all the types of chickens now more about 80 percent of water consumed by chicken is thrown out again into the barn either by respiration or excretion in the feces so if bird is consuming 100 ml of water 80 ml is thrown out again maybe by respiration excretion in the feces it is given back to the barn and as i said around 50 to 70 percent relative humidity that is highly desirable so if you have more than this it's always a pressure on the respiratory tract of the chicken dampness that is higher humidity in most of the area which is a, a present situation now what happens is whenever the air is not very dry or very humid the birds are very comfortable with their respiratory system but when the humidity is more it puts a lot of pressure on the respiratory system right from nostrils this pressure starts and birds cannot need normally breathe normally because they have to exert a lot of pressure for inhalation of air and expiration of air so a lot of pressure means naturally the function of respiration is hampered the birds will not get enough fresh air now i said one factor was poor air exchange now what happens is generally it will lead to ammonia built up in the shades if we are uh, talking of very small chicks first week chicks wherein the heating is done by burning something maybe coal then there will be carbon monoxide 
but otherwise also carbon dioxide and ammonia buildup will be there in elder birds also. Now what happens is this damage they will damage to ciliated epithelial cells of trachea. Now what is this? This is a special characteristic of our chicken trachea. Now trachea is our windpipe. I will show you the dramatic, uh, sorry, dramatic presentation. Uh, the respiratory system has got windpipe which has got a lining of specific cells and on these cells there are very minute micro hair like structures which are called a cilia and they keep on continuously beating and by their continuous movement they will not allow these pathogens to enter into the deeper system they will keep on removing these microorganisms from system along with that there is a small amount of mucus also which is a normal thing but it is a thin watery mucus not a thick one which you cannot generally see you can only feel if you open the track and move your finger you can feel it but it's not very high amount and thick mucus so what happens is when there is ammonia in the shed that is nh3 and then water is there in the mucus h2o when they combine they form what is known as nh4oh ammonium hydroxide and this is a highly irritant chemical so in the trachea, this chemical is formed because of NH3 and ammonia uh, water in mucus and then you get this product, ammonium hydroxide and that will damage the ciliated epithelial cells. If this cilia is damaged, they cannot uh, do their function of removing the bacteria or pathogens and then they will de deeply enter into the other respiratory system, basically lungs and air sacs and cause all the further damages. So primary defense of respiratory system is weakened because from there only if you're the guards are there if the guards are not working the enemy can straightway enter into our houses so same thing happens is if our ciliated epithelial cells of like are damaged now what happens is as i said you increase upon the levels more than 25 ppm ciliostasis what is meant by ciliostasis this movement will stop cilia will be there but this movement will slow down or completely stop and at 40 ppm above 40 ppm there will be deciliation that is the cilia will reduce in the numbers so further damage actually in many farms the ammonia level is always higher than this if you get really the ammonia meters and go into the sheds in many sheds it is above 50 ppm i have seen it so we should always try to keep ammonia to lowest level by good ventilation when there is poor air exchange no ventilation and this factor is very important in humid conditions so again weakening of first line of defense this is a drawing of what I meant. Now this is a no, upper picture, upper left. You see is a normal cilia. Now these are the cells which will line our windpipe or trachea. And these are the hair like fine strips. Of course, they are very fine. And when you enlarge about a lack of times, one lakh times, you can see them under electron microscope. So these cilia, they are normal things. And they, by continuous movement, they will not allow the pathogens. The second picture what you are seeing on the right side. These are the pathogens and by their continuous movement, they will not allow to attach it or go down. They will remove them outside. But when there is higher ammonia, I, one thing is it will stop their movement and then higher amounts, it will de cause desilation. You can see the number of cilia has reduced almost by one third or one fourth. So ammonia has this type of damaging effect on our respiratory tract of chickens. And then our first line of defense of chicken is weakened. These organisms, will take upper hand, they will go down to the lower respiratory tract and produce all the diseases. And specifically what happens is the main problem will be E. coli or coli bacillosis because E. coli are known as opportunistic organisms. They own on their own, they generally cannot do anything. If they get some favorable condition like high ammonia leading to these type of conditions or maybe other infections like mycoplasma or something, they take upper hand and you see a major mortality in birds because of damage to this respiratory tract what happens is on the left top you see a normal trachea which should be white no red color and slight mucus over there no blood nothing inside in minor insert you can see the slow to pictures which is known as congested trachea in very high infections like ai you can see a hemorrhagic trachea that is blood in the trachea you can see the blood clots and dark red color so this normal trachea when it is not able to function properly it will lead to this type of conditions and finally this type because this is indication that our respiratory system has got some problem then i should said healthy air sacs that was only a drawing here you can see a photograph 
air sacs are very thin transparent structures here if you see it's a thin structure many times it is not visible also you can see through see through and through so it's a very clear structure you can see even those feathers also over here so it's thin transparent structure which is not having any uh, what is it trans translucence it is highly transparent but when the respiratory system damages it will have a problem like this this is called as air sacculitis same similar air curtain is there but you can see completely for the exudate accumulator over there so this is again an indication of our respiratory distress or respiratory problem similarly i said one of the signs is swollen eyes or discharge from the eyes you can see this is a normal eye very bright round eye no swelling no discharge nothing very active but but in case of respiratory tract we may see this type of picture again you can see swelling of eye eye is not completely open you can see the frothy liquid into the eyes of the bird so it is again affected eye maybe because of some respiratory issues then i said about vaccination reactions vaccine we have to go for vaccination to protect our birds from infectious diseases because diseases are going to be with us 24 by 7 and we have to prevent them prevention is always better than cure we say so without any doubt it has contributed significantly to the health and welfare of poultry birds but vaccine viruses vaccine is finally virus it is not something miracle we take the virus from the disease outbreaks we reduce its severity pathogenicity but it will produce the antibodies after giving to the birds so that is the virus so it has to multiply live vaccines when we give these vaccination reactions are related to live viruses not the killed ones so what happens is these viruses they will replicate multiply into the body of birds now certain viruses they multiply in the intestinal tract like nd ib ibd vaccine viruses and certain viruses they apply reply or replicate in respiratory tract like nd and ib viruses so due to replication of respiratory in the respiratory tract it will provoke a respiratory distress already there are so many viruses i'll show you again so presence of these vaccination viruses and multiplication in uh, per respiratory tract will produce some respiratory, respiratory distress and cause the problem in the birds. Already many pathogens are present in upper respiratory tract. Maybe Newcastle disease virus, maybe infectious bronchitis virus, maybe avian metanemovirus, mycoplasma. They are generally present in uh, some amount in respiratory systems, uh, upper respiratory tract. Add to this the vaccine virus, they multiply in the respiratory tract add to this ammonia buildup in the shade, poor ventilation, immunosuppression. So what happens is all this cumulative effect of everything is weakened respiratory system. So we must take care of preventing the vaccination reaction also. Now respiratory diseases encountered in chicken are infectious coryza, infectious laryngotracheitis, ILT, infectious bronchitis, Newcastle disease, avian influenza, which has taken a very high toll in North India in January and February this month and CRD, chronic respiratory or complicated CRD, which are very common. So these are basically primary diseases of respiratory diseases system. But we must not forget that there are certain other diseases also, which involve some respiratory organs. These diseases like fall cholera, aspergillosis, which is fungal disease, and fall pox, diphtheritic form or wet pox. They also affect the respiratory organs. So respiratory diseases are having a wider reach. So what should be our strategy then? Because we know we don't want to have any problems with our birds. So what should be our strategy? Looking at all these challenges, our target is to improve respiratory immunity. Now, respiratory immunity improvement means the respiratory system should be kept in healthy situation, the airway should be clean, and there should not be stress on the birds. So we should also try to increase the hemoglobin level in the birds so that oxygen carriage is better. You know hemoglobin, the role of hemoglobin is to take the oxygen from fresh inhaled air and carry it to the tissues for their functions. So if the lower hemoglobin is there, lower oxygen will go, the tissues will not perform properly. If you increase the hemoglobin level, more oxygen will be available and tissues will be more healthily performing their functions. And during this high risk period of uh, humidity or field challenges or vaccine reaction, we should use the products which can remove the excess mucus in the bronchi by dilating them. Certain products are bronchodilators. Because what happens is this mucus, what I said, normally very thin watery mucus layer will be there on brachia and bronchi, but it won't be thick or blocking the lumen or the cavity inside the bronchial trachea. If the lumen is thick, it will reduce the cavity in the bronchus, so naturally air passages are narrowed, the air will not go inside. And when through this thick mucus, 
maybe in bronchi maybe in trachea trachea when the air goes in and out because of this mucus it will make the sounds like <laughs> that type of sound comes which is indication that there is lot of mucus accumulated into the respiratory tract and that's why we should use bronchial dilators which will remove the excess mucus or expectorate it outside so to protect the lungs and overall respiratory system we must follow clean poultry shed environment in case of disease use the products to expand the capacity of lungs to ease the respiratory distress now i'll show you some photographs of the diseases which i mentioned in my list what are the diseases in the poultry involving respiratory tract one is avian influenza what we call bird flu or avian in some areas variant in some areas it will show you normally you see very dark red color of wattles and comb but here you see swollen comb swollen comb swollen wattles bluish color or cyanotic combs and wattles that is one indication then the shank region if you see they are swollen and hemorrhagic in normal birds we will not see any blood over here so they are swollen and hemorrhagic then normal trachea of chicken as i showed you it should look like this but in case of hpa highly pathogenic air we will see lot of hemorrhage and blood clotted blood into the trachea of the chickens it is a very serious condition as i said in january and february this year a huge number of birds died of air in northern india then there may be plug at the bronchotracheal junction as i said the trachea is there then it divides into two bronchi at that point where the junction is there sometimes you will see this type of plug now this plug will block the respiratory passages and birds will die of suffocation then you will, in certain cases in ai you may get hemorrhages on the card epicardial fat on the heart you can see this type of hemorrhages then egg peritonitis you can get in case of layers or breeders so here you can see different picture one is this picture and one next picture now here when it is solid uh, exudate like thing it is generally bacterial origin because of e coli but when it is a liquid like this it is generally viral origin and maybe ai so these two are different pictures you can see this is having different picture this is a different one then torticolis in case of newcastle disease we can see the twisted of twisting of thing birds looking at the star star gazing which is seen in the recovery phase of newcastle disease then in the post mortem of newcastle disease we can see the ulceration of cecal tonsils on opening they look like this on the proventriculus you see lot of hemorrhages then trachea again as i said normally this trachea and in case of nd it will be congested trachea slightly reddish color then again one photo showing more hemorrhages on proventriculus and this is a very serious form right side what you see necrotic plaques in intestine this is very serious form wherein the mortality could be very high like 80 or 90 percent then infectious coryza the eyes are swollen the bird you can see the eyes absolutely not normal completely swollen closed eyes here also you see lot of swelling here nose is completely closed bird is not able to open the eyes same thing swollen eye again in case of infectious coryza here you can see some exudate from the eyes also this is swelling is also there complete swelling below eyes infraorbital sinus but in the eyes also you can see this type of exudate coming out then here you can see this nasal discharge i told you there should not be any discharge need discharge from the nostrils discharge from the eyes indication of some respiratory distress so here you can see this is nostril and this yellow thing what you are seeing is a discharge here you can see again the swollen eyes so these are some of the photographs which show you the respiratory problem now in case of ib the gross respiratory lesions are not very clear but in case of ib the major part is played by either reproductive form or nephrogenic or kidney damaging form nephropathogenic so in case of ib you can see the internal quality is damaged there is more liquid uh, albumin then the calcification is not proper wrinkled eggs very thin shelled eggs different colored eggs different size egg different shape eggs so these are all indications of ib but this is not confirmation confirmation has to be done with laboratory procedures and then nephropathogenic form which damages the kidneys which can see can be seen in case of broilers as uh, visceral gout in case of older birds you can see it as kidney stone so this is not a kidney stone really this is uro uh, lithiasis we call this stone formation in the urinary tract so this is indication of nephrogenic form pathogenic form of ib so we know all these things so what should be the principles of prevention of respiratory disease complex general prevention uh, 
good cleaning and disinfection of shed between the floors. I said you this in the very beginning. Now what happens is many times what happens when the birds are shifted from one shed either as a broilers to the market or from brooding shed to growing shed, there is no any disease history in the farm. So what they feel there is no infection in the shed. So let us go for nominal cleaning and disinfection. But certain viruses or bacteria or pathogens, they do not cause any damage to the elder birds, but they can cause damage to the young chicks. So if the infection has occurred at a later stage, your birds are not suffering from anything because they are immune. But when you remove the birds, the infection is there in the sheds. So if you don't thoroughly clean and disinfect, the new batch of chicks which is placed will get the infection right from beginning. So batch after batch it will go. So very good cleaning and disinfection between the sheds that is a terminal disinfection and other is known as a continuous disinfection wherein at a frequent level, maybe weekly once or weekly twice, we have to go with viricidal sprays that will reduce the bio burden because I said why many times vaccines and antibiotics fail is mainly bio burden. So by use of regular sprays in the presence of birds, we are reducing the bio burden. Then prevention of immunosuppression, there are so many factors, managemental, field related, environmental, all those which must take care to avoid the immunosuppression by putting minimum stress on the birds. Because stress and overcrowding are major factors causing immunosuppression. Then keep the environment well ventilated. I told you what is the importance of ventilation. Clean and dust free and keep stress to minimum. So when you keep the well ventilated environment clean and dust free, naturally the respiratory system will not have any stress on it. The birds will be very healthily inhaling and out exhaling the air. So you don't have any problem over there. Now, what can be done as a prevention against RDC? We can use certain products. Products can be used as preventive as well as, as curative. Now, as I said in the beginning, nowadays people are going more for herbal products than chemical products, what have been used so far. So we can use products which will protect the respiratory system of the birds as a prevention. And similarly, these products can be used during treatment also or in the phase of vaccine reaction. Now we know that we have to go for live vaccines, maybe broilers or layers of breeders. So many times we go for this vaccine vaccination. And especially now uh, this low patrolling AI, it is present throughout the India. And then uh, certain viruses can cause the respiratory reaction in the presence. So if you use the products to reduce this reaction, naturally you will safeguard your birds against these respiratory reactions. So these products, as I said, should be able to dilate bronchi so that they can remove the excess mucus, expectorant. In humans also we go like Benadryl expectorant or some other expectorant in the cuff because we cuff, what is cuff? Cuff is our mucus. So we expectorate it. So similar products can be used in poultry to dilate the bronchi and expectorate the, expectorate the uh, curve outside. So the birds will get good relief for their respiration. So thanks a lot for your kind attention. After my presentation, uh, there will be some other uh, presentations and then at the end, uh, we'll have the question and answer session. As uh, Mithun said, you can put all the questions in your question and answer session. They will be replied at the end of it. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, sir, for this insightful presentation. It was wonderful to get to know the overview and solutions for respiratory challenges in chickens in humid conditions. I request to the audience, if you have any questions, please write your questions in the question area and we'll discuss your questions on the QA round. For the next session, we have Dr. Chandan Chatterjee with us. Dr. Chandan is a qualified veterinary graduate and I've got 14 years of rich experience in veterinary industry. He has commendable exposure on phytogenic solutions for optimum health and productivity for poultry. Currently, he is working as group product manager in natural remedies. Dr. Chandan will discuss on a natural solution to improve the respiratory health and productivity of chickens under challenging conditions. Over to you, sir. Namaskar, everyone. Um, thank you, Mithun. So please allow me to uh, share my presentation. Yes, sir. Is it visible, Mithun? Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Okay. So first, before going to start my presentation, I'd like to thank Dr. Vipeter, sir, for the 
very insightful presentation and he also mentioned that respiratory immunity could be a key for uh, better health and productivity of the bird so after his presentation i start my presentation on that keynote that how can the respiratory immunity can be a uh, key for better health and productivity so uh, sir very clearly told uh, Rikar, sir that avian respiratory system is very different from the human uh, or mammalian respiratory system uh, it's quite different to make it more efficient for the birds uh, it's, it's quite complex in nature and it's more prone to infections so uh, how to how to protect this protect the respiratory system or how to make it more effective so already respiratory immunity is there that is supported by cilia mucus and some uh, immunity cells but uh, when we talk about a perfect immunity or a, a proper immune modulation the proper immune modulation actually based on positive modulation and negative modulation so positive modulation that means that enhancing the immunity part uh, enhancing the total respiratory immunity and when you talk about the negative modulation that means actually you are talking about the anti-inflammatory part controlling the inflammation or hypersensitivity part so that proper immunomodulation is required for proper respiratory immunity so for that uh, i just want to just tell we like take just few minutes to uh, talk about one of our product that is recipes uh, so recipes is a basically it's a completely natural and herbal solution that optimize the respiratory immunity so it is quite unique in our uh, deliverables so uh, i just i just discuss on that uh, so as I told, recipes is completely natural and herbal. So it contains basically with four uh, 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 ingredients it is having. Out of that four, three are uh, phyto extract, uh, extracts, herbal extract like glycerizing, vasicin, and rosmarinic acid. And one is essential oil that is carbon. So it is made of three herbal extract and one essential oil. So while going to the mode of action, so mode of action actually what is expected so recipes deliver the same for optimizing the respiratory immunity one side it enhances the respiratory immunity so when it will improve the respiratory immunity definitely birds will be more healthier less vulnerability to diseases so uh, chances of having respiratory diseases will be much less uh, productivity will be intact um, in fact, almost uh, there is an anti inflammatory action also provided by uh, recipes. So, with this anti inflammatory action, if there is any, any form of respiratory problem, also recovery will be faster. And the most unique point of recipes is better oxygenation. So, recipes has a unique hematidic action and respiratory soothing effect, and thereby it helps in the better oxygenation part. So, we all know that in uh, modern breeds, uh, the metabolic rate is quite high for giving the optimum productive performance and to support the higher metabolic rate proper oxygen supply to all cells is very crucial and this oxygenation to all cells basically supported by two system one is respiratory system second one is circulatory system so recipes in one hand supporting the respiratory system by improving the respiratory immunity and taking care of respiratory health and on the other side with its hematonic action it actually helps the oxygen carriage through blood and provides the proper oxygenation supply to all cells to support the optimum productive performance. So, uh, as I told about the respiratory immunity, I am just going through little deep. Uh, like glycerizing, we are talking about glycerizing, it has a positive impact on humoral immunity. Glycerizing also improves the lymphocyte and thrombocyte count and thymus cortex thickness, that will also improve the cell mediated immunity. Glycerizing inhibits the influenza A virus uptake into the cell. So it has an indirect role in somewhat to control the influenza A virus. Rosmarinic acid, another ingredient, it improves the antioxidant status. So uh, through it reduces the oxidative stress and improves the immunity through antioxidant property. And vasicin also has a immunostimulatory property by through humoral as well as cell mediated immunity improvement. Now talking to the uh, as a, as a validation part, uh, Dr. Ruplikar sir has very much uh, told that bald bronchial associated lymphoid tissue. So that is a one of the marker of respiratory immunity. We have uh, seen that that after given of recipes, the area of the bronchial associated respiratory tissue, bald area, it has been improved in chicken. So it is quite evident when you are giving recipes, the respiratory immunity will improve. Then while talking on anti-inflammatory actions. We have done two tests. One is uh, 
the uh, COX2 inhibitory action we have checked and we have seen uh, compared to product in that the COX2 inhibitory property of uh, recipes is much better in almost all doses uh, and the IC50 value is also much lesser. So it proves that uh, recipes has a very significant uh, anti-inflammatory property. We have done the similar uh, trial on PG2 uh, inhibitory property and we have also seen that the PG2 inhibitory property also in case of PG2 inhibitory property the reaction of recipes is much better than the competitor trials and the IC50 value is also very much less. So these two trials very very clearly if that signifies that recipes has a strong anti-inflammatory property. And third while what we were talking about the better oxygenation part glycylizing is a well-known hematinic agent that improves the hemoglobin and RBC level. So many of you may use some hematinic uh, products uh, for, for your birth. So uh, recipes also take care as a hematinic property and takes care of the hemoglobin and the RBC level and uh, it actually improves oxygen carries through blood. Then again, vasocin also uh, has a potent bronchodilator. Uh, Dr. Rikasa several times he told the, about the bronchodilation during respiratory challenges. So it has a very strong potent bron bronchodilator and respiratory stimulant. Carvon, that the essential oil, it is also have a very cooling effect, soothing effect on the respiratory tract. So overall, through a hematonic property and respiratory soothing effect, it improves the better oxygenation. That is a key point of key deliverable of recipes. The other benefits of recipes as because it comes in the respiratory tonic sequence so there are some few generic uh, benefits that all, almost every respiratory tonic provides like antispasmodic property bronchodilation property mucolytic property expectorant property antioxidant property so these these are the very common benefits of any of the respiratory tonic and uh, recipes also having all this property but these are very generic common properties so we are not highlighting on that we are highlighting on the the unique property of respiratory that is improving the respiratory immunity or the anti-inflammatory property or the better oxygenation property. So if you see it has all the property of the normal uh, respiratory tonic as well as has some unique property that keeps uh, that ensures the optimized respiratory health immunity as well as productive performance. So while talking on performance I just want to show one small trial data uh, that we have done on broiler on 30,000 birds. So here we have taken two groups, one is control group, second one is recipes group. Uh, so both the groups in there, there were some challenges with some CRD symptoms. So uh, here, if you can see, uh, while talking on the productive performance part, if you see the body weight, day 35 in control group, body weight was 1800 gram, whereas in recipes group, body weight was 1925 gram. So there is a significant improvement of 125 gram increase in the recipes group. Same with the day 42, the body weight was 2340 gram and the recipes group it was 2500 gram that is 160 gram more body weight in the recipes group while talking in the fcr in day 42 fcr was 1.19 1.89 whereas in the recipes group it is 1.71 that is 18 point improvement in the uh, 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 fcr then talking to the mortality yeah if you if you see the cumulative, cumulative mortality from day 1 to 42 uh, in control group the mortality was 8.76 percentage whereas in respiratory group, it is quite less than 5% mortality. And activity level also, if you see in control group, 4 means 80% uh, active, uh, almost 80% but it has a good activity level, whereas in the respiratory group, 100% birds were active. Now coming to the clinical science part, if you see, comparing both the group, control group and respiratory group, if you see the nasal discharge, nasal discharge in control group, it is 2.5%, whereas in respiratory group, it is only 0.8%. Ocular discharge, 2.3% in control group, whereas it is only 1% in recipes group. Similar finding we can see in gasping and feeding behavior also much, much uh, improved behavior in recipes group. So with this with this trial data, we, it is clear it is not only the one trial data, it has multiple trial data. And the summary, it says that recipes not only takes care, takes care of the uh, uh, respiratory immunity, respiratory health, uh, reduces the vulnerability, vulnerability to respiratory diseases, uh, it also takes care of the productive performance of the bird. So uh, just want to tell you the recommendation of recipes in broiler. Uh, it is being recommended in two, two phases. In the first phase from 13th to 18th day, continuous six days, it is recommended for 10 ml per 100 birds. And in the second phase, 27 to 32 days, again for six days, it is recommended at 20 ml per 100 birds. For layers, it is recommended for week a month program 
15 ml per 100 parts and breeders also it is recommended for week and month program 20 ml per 100 parts so the product is available in one liter and five liter so thank you thank you for listening to me if you have any query regarding the product you can ask in the question section Mithun, your mic is muted. Yes, I saw. Thank you, Dr. Chantan, for your crisp and informative presentation. You mentioned few relevant points in your presentation that could be very useful in the practice. So now we'll proceed to the question answer session. We have received a number of questions from audience and we'll try to answer as many of them as possible. Okay, so I'll, I'll come up with the first question, sir. Uh, I would like Dr. Rukarin, sir, to answer this. How can we take care of the respiratory challenges in layer? BK month antibiotic therapy is sufficient. This is, a, this is the question, sir. Uh, this is a good question. But as I said in my presentation, uh, we are trying to minimize the use of antibiotics. In European countries, they are already banned. I and mean, in our country also, maybe next four or five years, they will be banned for preventive purpose. So BK month program, which is generally preventive purpose, should not be a normal tool for this. As I said, the management inputs like lean environment, stress-free, dust-free, clear, good ventilation, those should be the good ones. And whenever they want to go with the live vaccines like IBM, uh, ND live vaccines, they should use the products which will minimize the respiratory reaction so they can protect their tract because they are long-lived birds as compared to broilers. So they are, uh, the vaccinations are many and they have to take care during specially vaccine reactions. Okay, so okay, so you gave a sufficient answer, so you gave such a uh, beautiful answer for the question. The one more question, sir, I would like to uh, give it to you. Any specific change in vaccination schedule is required to control respiratory infections? Uh, see, basically, what I feel uh, in case of uh, broilers or uh, layers, even in breeders, uh, as I said in my presentation, in the present scenario where low pathogenic air is present in India use of lasota live vaccine many times causes reactions and our very senior uh, pathology dr zail vegar who retired as uh, dean of uh, jabalpur veterinary college he has written articles in uh, 2008 world veterinary poultry association and uh, one more journal wherein he has clearly uh, established that the uh, administration of lasota live in the presence of ai causes respect reactions so it is better to avoid those types of vaccines and go for clone vaccines that will give less chance of respiratory reaction, which may cause disease rather than protection. Okay. So that was a good uh, answer, sir, with the practical uh, thing you have given the explanation. Uh, Dr. Chandan, sir, you have a question, sir. Can we use recipes in treatment also? Yeah, basically, recipes is uh, designed for a prophylactic use, for a preventive use. Uh, so the theme is that if you continue to use for recipes in two stages, or maybe for layer and broiler for week and month program, so the chances of getting the respiratory disease will be less. But yeah, definitely, if somebody wants to use it in treatment purpose, definitely the product can be used with the, for the treatment purpose also. Okay, thank you so much, sir. That may have cleared many people's doubt. Uh, Rukhari, sir, we have one more question for you, sir. Yeah. We have, we'll go with the uh, last two more questions to you. What kind of management improvisation helps in reducing respiratory challenges in humid conditions? Uh, in humid conditions, one thing is uh, we must avoid overcrowding so that whatever is thrown out of the body as respiration water, that will be reduced. Second point, if the humidity is high, and the air movement, natural air movement is not there. We have to fix high speed fans in the sheds so that they will take out this humid air outside and birds can very easily respire inside. So those are the two things which can do as a management is well. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sandan, sir, you have one more question, sir. Does recipes interact with other medicines or supplements while adding in water? Uh, no, actually, recipes is, a, as I told, it's a completely natural and herbal product. And it's actually uh, very inert and it doesn't react with any other medicine and or any feed supplement while adding in the water. It's very safe to add in the water. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So because of this time constraint, we'll uh, cut down this question answer session with the last two questions, sir. 
so the question it will be for rukatika sir um, as a evident the bird's respiratory system is very advanced than human and is very effective but what makes the bird more prone to respiratory infections than humans uh, actually the system no doubt it is advanced but basically as i said it's not restricted to one part of the body it is spread throughout the body and that's why even the minor insult to any part of respiratory tract will naturally lead to respiratory distress and since this is a very basic system providing oxygen to all the tissues for their functioning it will not do the work properly and that's why even the minor insult which is which may start from nostrils or in a deeper insect will cause the problem because the system though it is advanced it's delicate also and uh, since it is not only lungs which expand actually lung portrait lungs have very little expansion capacity as compared to we people but the most important part is air sacs which is a very delicate structure and that's why even though it is advanced the minor inserts will definitely cause respiratory distress leading to poor results in portrait farm okay sir thank you so much sir i'll go with the last question to you sir Yeah. Yeah. CRD is a common problem in field. Mm -hmm. How can we manage the situation? Uh, CRD many times it is vertically transmitted from parents to offspring. So first thing is purchase the chicks from known source where the parents are clean. Okay. Then there are certain medications which are preventive for mycoplasmosis. All starts with T, tyrosine, tiamine, tilbelosine, tilmicosine. they can use as a preventive as per the instructions usage instructions of the manufacturers and third if you are having doubt of mycoplasma in the flock vaccinations against ib and nd should be done at very young age if you do go for later age vaccination they are going to definitely cause much more reaction if the mycoplasma is present and similarly if somebody is going for spray vaccination the vaccination on day 1 if they are doing the size of more droplets has to be very critically monitored if the droplet size is less than 160 microns it is definitely going to cause problem of mycoplasmosis only when the birds are old enough you can go to 100 microns for younger birds chicks like day 1 or day 2 the micron size of spray needs to be 160 to 180 microns so one is vertical transmission one is preventive treatment and third is vaccination all these things they have to take into account while uh, managing the flock of broilers okay sir thank you sir So we got one uh, one question, sir, which is a one interesting question, uh, which I want to discuss with you. What is the main point in cleaning with disinfection to protect respiratory problem? See, when I mean cleaning and disinfection, it is not targeted to protect only respiratory system. It's targeted at getting rid of most of the infectious agents present in the shed. So disinfection, cleaning and disinfection. Cleaning is the most important part in this because cleaning. has to be done to such an extent that you won't see any dust or dirt or grease or any uh, cobwebs or anything with your naked eyes so that is that will kill almost 80% of your organisms and then your disinfectant disinfection with a very good molecule if you do as per the recommendation of the company then it works because many times what i have seen is they use small quantity of water for spray as a terminal disinfection what is recommended is actually 40 liters per 1000 square feet shed but they generally use hardly 10 to 15 liters per 1000 square foot empty shed empty so even if the molecule they use is a good it will not have the effect because proportionately the product will also be less uh, used in the shed so cleaning is very important dry cleaning wherein most of the 80% will go because if the cleaning is not your proper some organic matter remain your disinfectant even if you increase the dose of disinfectant it will be useless because these pathogens they are very safe in organic matter nowadays of course newer and newer disinfectants are coming which claim to be effective in presence of organic matter also but as a general rule we should try to remove entire organic matter outside the shed before going for wet disinfection thank you so much sir both the speakers for answering the questions my sincere thanks to dr rutkigar sir and dr chandan for their valuable time and knowledge sharing with us we have reached the end of this webinar due to the shortage of time we couldn't answer all your questions right here but i assure you can we will uh, get back to you and answer all your questions uh, through the email which you have provided if you have any qu further queries or feedback to give please contact your nearest representative from natural remedies 
or you can write to us at chandan at naturalremedy.com. I'll be very happy to get your valuable suggestions or feedback and we will reply to you at the earliest. Thank you all once again. Have a nice day.